Hello and welcome to St Paul's and St George's Church where we're coming to you online again uh, from different people's homes. Uh, so we're inviting you this Sunday morning to join us, to participate in our worship, uh, to draw near to God with that promise that as we do that, he promises to draw near to you. So you'll be watching us from various places, maybe sitting with a nice cup of coffee. Uh, we're aware of folk joining us from around the world as well as here in Edinburgh. And we just encourage you to uh, really engage in participating in this service. And we hope that you'll find it helpful, encouraging and comforting. As we prepare to consciously come into the presence of Almighty God, let's pray together. Father, thank you that you are with us this morning, wherever we're watching this from. Thank you that, again that your spirit isn't confined to buildings, to particular places, but that you are the God of the whole earth. And we pray that wherever we're watching this from this morning, that you might meet with us. As we face an uncertain future, as we face a situation that perhaps will definitely get worse before it gets better, we ask, Father, for your comfort, for your presence and for your peace. Would you help us this morning to remember who you are, to remember what you've done through the person of Jesus Christ, that through his birth and life and death and resurrection, we can know hope, we can know faith, and we can know life, even in the face of adversity. So would you come and would you speak to us this morning? We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Mark now as he leads us in our opening worship from his home in South Queensferry. Well, wherever you are, just so good to worship together this morning. If you want to sing along, if you want to grab an instrument in your house and play along, that's great. Just join in. The words are going to be on the screen and it's really good to be worshiping together today. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. God, you do great. O oh, hero of hell, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do And break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free and free captive, break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, I say your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great. God, you do great things. You've done great things in every one of us, Lord. Go with thank you for your goodness this morning. We thank you that your peace is with us. We thank you that you are with us in every home, in every country, in every place that is watching this. And we join together just now. We say thank you to you. We ask that you'd open our eyes to see more of your love and more of your grace, God. Thank you for who you are. as the ocean loving kindness says the flood when the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood who is love will not remember who can cease to sing his praise he can never Throughout his eternal days, so on the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the floodgates of God's mercy. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sin from above. Heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed again to world in love. I'm 
God, we're surrounded, we're surrounded by you. So grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured in session from above, and heaven's peace and perfect justice. Kiss the guilty world in love. Over the past couple of weeks, a number of people have found it really helpful to use this liturgy that was written by Pete Gregg and the 24-7 prayer community. And Libby, joining us from her home in Blackhall, is now going to lead us in a version of that liturgy for the coronavirus crisis. We're going to pray now for the situation that we find ourselves in the world, uh, in our own nation and in our own lives now, using a prayer uh, that we've adapted from one written by the 24-7 prayer network. So let's pray. Jehovah Shalom, Lord of Peace. We remember those living in the UK and other coronavirus hotspots and those currently in isolation. May they know your presence in their isolation, your peace in their turmoil, and your patience in their waiting. Prince of Peace, you are powerful and merciful. Let this be their prayer. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Help us, God our Saviour, for the glory of your name. God of all comfort and counsel, we pray for those who are grieving, reeling from the sudden loss of loved ones. May they find your fellowship in their suffering, your comfort in their loss and your hope in their despair. And we name before you those known to us who are vulnerable and anxious, the frail, the sick and the elderly. God of all comfort, you are powerful and merciful. May this be our prayer. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Jehovah Rapha, God who heals. We pray for all medical professionals dealing daily with the intense pressure of this crisis. Grant them resilience in weariness discernment in diagnosis, and compassion upon compassion as they care. We thank you for the army of researchers working steadily and quietly towards a cure. Would you rise above this present darkness as the sun of righteousness with healing in your rays? God of wisdom, we pray for our leaders, the World Health Organization, national governments and local leaders too, heads of schools, churches, supermarkets and supply chains, leaders of hospitals and other institutions. Since you have positioned these people in public service for this hour, we ask you to grant them wisdom beyond their own wisdom to contain this virus, faith beyond their own faith to fight this fear and strength beyond their own strength to sustain vital institutions through this time of turmoil. God of all wisdom and counsel, you are powerful and merciful. May this be our prayer. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. And a blessing over all of us. May El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, who loves you, protect you. May Jesus Christ, his son who died for you, save you. And may the Holy Spirit, who broods over the chaos and fills you with his presence, intercede for you and in you for others at this time. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Our sermon series was set many months ago before any of us had any idea of this particular pandemic. And this morning's passage is Psalm 42, the prayer of tears. In a few minutes, Paul is going to come and speak to us from his home in Portobello. But for now, Gemma 
is going to read this morning's Bible passage from Psalm 42, if you want to go and get a Bible. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While well, people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I yet will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. From the land of the Jordan, the height of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Before Katie and I had kids, we went travelling and we went around Africa and Asia. And as much as we enjoyed it, there became a, a point where we got homesick. We missed certain places, we missed people, we missed certain chocolate bars, we missed home. In our reading that we've had, we see the psalmist missing home. In the commentaries, uh, James M. Boyce said this, he said this of the psalmist that it's not that he doesn't believe that God is everywhere or that God is with him or not with him, sorry. He's praying to the God of the Psalms after all, but it is being away from home that has gotten him down. Well, it's a, a timely reading. The preaching sermon series was set months before we knew anything of the coronavirus before we knew that people would be self-isolating, before we knew that people wouldn't be able to gather together uh, as big groups, to come together as church. And yet we see in this psalm similar feelings. The psalm is longing to be gathered again with people that he knows and loves, longing to be in Jerusalem the context for this is that the psalmist is away from home, unable to go into the temple and worship. I know for many of us who attend church on a Sunday and are used to going and being around people that we know and love, a place where we belong, we too feel that pain. We have a sense of homesickness, if you like. And as people, it's important uh, to recognise that we need to belong. It's important for us to belong somewhere. Brené Brown, who is an author and a public speaker, she says this. She says, a deep sense of love and belonging is an irreducible need of all people. We are biologically, cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love, to be loved, and to belong. We see in this psalm in verse 2 that the psalmist is saying, my soul thirsts, it hungers, it longs to be back in a place where he can meet God. He says, where can I go to meet God? Again, we feel that we can't physically go to a church building and it's right to stay at home to protect the NHS and to save lives. 
but we feel that pain, where can we go to meet with God? The clergy have uh, created a list of people that we, we just need to call that might be in the category of, of self-isolated or, or maybe vulnerable at this time. And we're working our way through calling people who might be um, in a place where they'd appreciate a phone call. I called uh, a congregation member uh, last week, and this is somebody that has been at the church since the 1940s, just talked about how he was missing and longing to be back again with the people that he belongs to, gathered in a place where he can meet with God and worship God. Well, in verse 6, the psalmist says that he feels sad, he feels downcast, but he remembers God He says, I remember you. And there might be a little bit of work to do in finding home. Home might look different for a little while. But there's a real challenge there to find a home from home. The psalmist chooses to remember the things of God. He chooses to remember the things that bring people together, the things that he believes in, that they believe in, that they gather around. And it'd be my prayer, my encouragement, that we remember things like the virtual connect groups that we're doing, the conference calls that we're doing, the courses that are still running, the fact that we can live stream things, that we remember these things and we create a home from home, home familiar things that that help us remember God, remember that we belong, remember that we are part of a community, that we are church scattered rather than church gathered, but that we are still part of a family, that we do still belong, that we remember to pick up scripture, to read scripture. We remember to do these things that people all around the world are doing, that we belong. We find home from home. Secondly then, I think it's important as we look at um, finding God in chaos, Verse 3 and verse 10 in this psalm. The psalmist is faced with difficult and tough questions, hearing difficult, difficult comments like us on the news, maybe things that just aren't encouraging. And some of his friends and foes are saying to him, where is your God? You're feeling down, you're feeling isolated. Where is your God now? For some of us, we may be feeling that too. Where is God in the midst of all these dark clouds? Where is God in the midst of all this pain? Where is God in the midst of this bad news? Maybe you don't typically go to church on a Sunday, but you're intrigued and you're checking in and watching some of these live streams. Maybe you're asking the question, like the people in the psalm are asking the psalmist, where is your God? Where is God in the midst of all of this? Maybe your friends, your family, your work colleagues are asking the same question. Where is God? Can you see God in all of this? I remember uh, being in a steam room. uh, And if those of you who have been in a steam room, you can't see much. There's steam all around. It's a bit of a surreal environment. And I remember my older son wandered in, actually, and there was just myself there and and him. And he walked into the steam room and was hit by all this steam. And he, he physically couldn't see anything. And his natural response was to shout out, Daddy, Daddy, I can't see. I can't see anything. And my response was, I know. I know you can't see, but Daddy's here and I can see. There's a a comment, a quote from Spurgeon who says this on about the psalmist that we've just read. He says, the psalmist might rather have said to those asking, where is your God? He might have said to them, where are your eyes? Where is your sight? For God is not only in heaven, but he is in me too. The psalmist in the psalm that we've just read, he says in verse 11, with all of this going on, with the clouds that gather, not being able to maybe see God clearly in the midst of all the chaos, he begins to choose to believe and put his trust and his praise in God. Verse 11 says, I will yet praise you despite all that is going on and we don't understand it and there's no easy answers, 
But despite it all, yet I will praise you. I will choose to lead myself in worship away from the temple, away from my people. I will choose to still praise and worship God. My encouragement would be to seek God, to find God, to look for God in all the things that are happening, despite all that we read and see and hear. There's a story of a, a missionary couple who uh, were married and they went out to a faraway land and the husband would go and, and speak to people who didn't know about God, didn't know about Jesus. It was quite a hostile place. And one day the husband was out preaching and talking to people about Jesus and he was persecuted to the point where he was killed. He never returned home and the, the wife, uh, now a new widow, was, was crying and sobbing. And a friend came round, an elderly lady, and she sat with her and she held her in, the arm, in her arms. She comforted her. It wasn't long before the local priest that had gone out there too, he came round. And he stood with them in the midst of the pain as the widow sobbed and sobbed. The widow looked at the priest and she said, where is God? Like in our psalm we've just read, where is God now? Where is God here? The priest thought about her. He looked at the widow. He looked at the elderly lady holding the widow. And he took his hand and he ran his hand down the arms of the elderly lady holding the widow. And he said, God is here in the arms of the old lady, your friend holding you. We might find God in the midst of chaos, in the arms of the NHS, in the cheers and the applause of the applause of the isolated people who are just cheering for the NHS. We might find it in the groups, the social platforms, people rallying together, sharing hope, sharing good news, sharing Jesus and hope in the midst of chaos, holding a light in the midst of darkness. Let me finish with a quote. Charlie Mackesy, uh, in his book, the, the Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse, says this. Those are dark clouds, said the boy. Yes, but they will move on, said the horse. The blue sky above never leaves. Let me just pray before we hand over to Mark. Lord, I pray that we would find home from home. We would remember you in the midst of all of this, that we would be encouraging uh, in our phone calls uh, as we interact online. Father, help us, Lord Jesus, to see you and to find you. For those who are asking, where is God? I pray that you would reveal yourself in many creative ways. Help us to be church for each other. Help us to create home for each other. Thank you that you're not removed from this situation, but you are with us still, Emmanuel. God with us in the midst of it all, and we look to you. Amen. Oh, how high would I climb mountains if the mountains were you high? Oh, how far I'd scale the valleys if you graced the other side? Oh, how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise? Against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply. Cause in the highlands and the hardy, neither more nor less inclined, I would serve and stop at nothing. You're just not that hard to find. So I will praise you on the mountain I will praise you in the mountains in my way You're the summit where my feet lie So 
Oh, I will praise you in the valley all the same. No little scar between the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands, in the heart, it called the same. Oh, 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 how far beneath your glory does your kindness extend the path from where your feet rest on the sunrise to where you sweep? Past. I know how fast would you come running if just a shadow me through the night and trace my steps through all my failure and walk me out the other side. For who could dare say in that mountain? Valley hill called Calvary But for the one I call good shepherd Like a lamb slain for me Oh, I will praise you on the mountain I will praise you when the mountains in my way You're the summit where my I will praise you in the valley all the same No less God between the shadows No less faithful when the night leads me astray You're the heaven where my heart is In the islands in the heartache all the same Wherever I walk through, wherever I am, your name can move mountains, wherever I stand. And if ever I walk through the valley of death, I'll sing through the shadows my song of the sand. Wherever I walk through, wherever I am, your name can move mountains, wherever I stand. And if ever I walk through the valley of death, I'll sing through the shadows my song of the sin, my song of the sin. From the grave is stolen valley, come the pastures we call grave. A mighty river flowing upward from a deep but empty grave. And I will praise you on the mountain. And I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my so I will praise you in the valley all the same. No less scar between the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands in the heart it called the same. So let's continue as we respond together in prayer. Father, thank you that we can know you through the hard times and the difficult times. As we prepare to go into this Holy Week, where just alongside the disciples, we face a future that is uncertain, full of anxiety and may well be quite dark. We pray that we might know your hope, that we might know your faith, 
that we might know your life. As we walk through the events this week of that first Holy Week, ranging from today's triumphant procession as people shouted Hosanna, moving to the clearing of the temple, moving then to Jesus eating that Passover supper with his friends, going through his arrest, his denial, his betrayal, and then climaxing on Friday as we remember again the events of the cross. Would you help us to know you walking alongside us? That even when things seem difficult, perhaps particularly when things seem dark, that you might help us to say, yet not my will, but yours be done. To cling to you this week, that we might know you walking alongside us. That even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you might be our strength and our comfort. Father, would you help us this week, however we're feeling, to still trust you, to still put our hope in you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy. Never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. And teach me some melodious song, sung by flaming tongues above. And praise the mountain, fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my greatest treasure Hither by thy help I'm come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Interposed His precious blood So we do hope that you found this service helpful and encouraging. Uh, just one or two events to tell you about uh, over the next few days that will be happening uh, online from St Paul's and St George's Church. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, uh, we have through our Facebook Live page, Night Prayer. And this has become a really helpful rhythm for some of us going through Holy Week of just ending each day at 8 o'clock with a short service of Night Prayer. 
And Paul, Libby and myself will be leading uh, ones this week and you connect with that uh, through the Facebook Live page and also the liturgy will be available on the church website. Thursday night we have some reflections and meditations for Maundy Thursday when again it'll last for about 45 minutes, again starting at 8 o'clock as we go through the events of that Passover meal where Jesus uh, said some amazing things that surprised and shocked his immediate followers. So do join us on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. And then the next night on Good Friday at 8 o'clock again, we'll spend some time reflecting on the cross itself, what it means for us, what it meant for the followers of Jesus, and indeed what it means for the whole world. So do join us at 8 o'clock each night this week for our different events. If you are part of St Paul's and St George's Church and want to contribute towards our MICA fund, then again you can find details of how you can give on our church website. Um, we just love to encourage you. We know that finances are hard for some people and uncertain, uh, but all the giving that goes from our MICA fund is towards uh, charities uh, that are really under pressure at the moment. So we just encourage you to continue to give uh, over the next two or three weeks for our MICA fund. But we again want to say thank you for joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you hopefully at one of our events this week on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday at 8 o'clock or next Sunday morning when we'll be celebrating Easter together. It'll be different, it'll be unusual, but we look forward to seeing you then. As we prepare to go into this next week, a week which may well hold uncertainty which may well hold some really bad news. Let's cling on to some good news. And I'd love to pray for you as we go into that week. Father, thank you that none of this comes as a surprise to you. And we pray that you, who are the same yesterday, today and forever, might walk alongside us, that we might know your blessing resting upon us, remaining with us, reassuring us and comforting us. And may your blessing of Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us, remain with us and all those whom we love and pray for this day. Amen.
to